The PLC professor welcomes you to this presentation on add-on instructions from the RS Logics 5000 series. The prerequisites to this lecture are a basic understanding of programmable logic controllers, some experience with basic program development in RS Logics 5000 environment can only further enhance your learning experience. If you are not already familiar with PLCs, you can acquire this knowledge by watching first the lecture series from either the disc that are available on our website or available on the PLC Professor channel on YouTube. In addition, you would be well served to acquire a copy of the lab projects manual from the website and use the video that we produced on PLC Professor channel on YouTube to download the free software and create a simulator. Or you can use an actual hardware training unit and then complete all or most of the lab project. With a good solid PLC background, you won't have any trouble understanding most of this presentation with or without RS Logics 5000 experience. The basic concepts are the same regardless of the PLC. We will be adding an RS Logics 5000 lab projects manual to our website bookshop in the very near future, which will include a project on creating and using add-on instructions. The process for creating these videos, all these videos, begins with a PowerPoint set of slides. We animate them and then we sit and we go through the slides and we record the discussion. We do not script or rehearse the presentation, but we do work from an outline. These videos are not produced in a studio, but from a desk with a microphone and a cup of coffee. And that includes an occasional dog barking if they're barking loud enough, or uh, the phone rings, etc. Now, when lecturing in the classroom in front of a live audience, I have the benefit of natural pauses that allow me to consider what I want to say next. However, in this venue, if I stop to think, all you're going to get is silence. We thank you for your patience. In this presentation, we will discuss the what is an add-on instruction the when do we create an add-on instruction, and how do we use an add-on instruction. We're going to cover the basic geography of an add-on instruction on the RS Logix 5000 landscape <clears throat> and with Rockwell Automation. We're going to discuss capabilities, limitations, and the expected benefits. This is not a sales presentation. However, we still are going to discuss the benefits. We will also discuss terminology up front rather than explaining it as we go. So rather than stopping each time we introduce a new term, we'll just go through the terminology up front and maybe do a little review as we go. We will also illustrate the structure and behavior of add-on instructions. With that basic introduction, an application will then be selected to demonstrate an add-on instruction. We will create the logic and explain how the logic functions. So this presentation does include some basic programming information uh, built into the building of an add-on instruction. Also, to provide a more time-friendly presentation for you, we are going to break up the presentation into segments of uh, 12 to 15, 20 minutes each. If you find this presentation is creating more questions than answers, you may need to watch the lecture series or even go through the basics advanced one or advanced two lab discussion series that we mentioned just a minute ago. Uh, there is a manual available to take you through these lab projects with a hardware trainer or with a simulator, as was explained. As an enterprise, the PLC professor has one product that we actually market, and that's training manual. We offer a 197-page full-color lab project manual for those, and for those in tough financial times, a PDF of the same manual watermarked and in black and white. So you can learn to program a PLC for the price of the electronic PDF 
and then watch the videos on the PLC Professor YouTube channel. After we've completed this presentation, meaning all of the individual segments of this presentation, we will then pr also provide a screen capture in our Slogix 5000 presentation on creating the same add-on instruction. When we speak of the landscape for add-on instructions, we mean specifically within Rockwell Automation. Other controller manufacturers, their development software has uh, a similar feature. They usually call them user-defined instructions, but they're all basically the same thing. So specifically within Rockwell Automation, let's talk about the landscape. So add-on instructions were first introduced with, with version 16 of RS Logix 5000. If you're not familiar with RS Logix 5000 or the Logix engine, when it first came out, um, it was pretty scary to most of the uh, controls engineers that were going to use it. And of course, the real computer geeks looked at it right away and thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I was slow coming around, but after I played with a little bit, I decided I really loved it. But uh, it grew very rapidly. The demand for new features um, took what was previously a four or five year cycle of introducing a new major rev level and reduced it down to about nine months. So every nine months, Rockwell was coming out with a new major release. So. Uh, they were added in version 16. The current version that will be introduced in this next cycle is version 21 that will include Studio 5000. They've integrated the HMI into uh, the programming development environment. So add-on instructions have been around for quite a while now in RS Logix 5000. Another class of add-on instructions called High Integrity or Safety were introduced with, with version 18. Add-on instructions were not meant to be used in the same manner as multiple routines and multiple programs and multiple tasks. Not meant to be used to organize your logic. So you don't want to get carried away with add-on instructions. Once you discover an excellent thread of code that you use over and over again in your programming, you can create a template to reuse it without totally redeclaring each variable for each reuse of the code. Not only does this improve the consistency, but it simplifies the readability of both the commissioning and for both the commissioning and maintenance personnel. The less visible lo the logic, the less documentation. You can also hide your logic from competitors, thereby protecting your intellectual property. And access to add-on instructions is the same as predefined instructions in both the toolbars and the help files. So once you've created and included your add-on instruction, it'll show up in the toolbars and in the help files, keeping in mind that if there are help files for your add-on instruction, you would have had to type in the information. Okay, each add-on instruction is a class of objects and each usage is an instance of that class of objects. Each instance of your code inherits any edits to the class of objects. Meaning that once you create an add-on instruction and use it, if you go back and edit the template or the class of objects, every instance is also updated or it, rather you could say it inherits whatever changes were made in the template. Add-on instructions can be created with ladder logic diagram, function block diagram, and or structured text, but never with sequential function charts, although they can be used in sequential function charts. So let me repeat that. Your actual add-on instructions can be created or made up comprised of Ladder logic diagrams, function block diagrams, and structured text, but not sequential function charts. But they can be used in sequential function chart programming.
The total number of input and output parameters and local tags for an add-on instruction is 512. Now that may not sound like a lot, but when you start really thinking about how to use and create add-on instructions, you'll see that if you're approaching 512, uh, you've really gone beyond what an add-on instruction was meant for. Add-on instructions should be kept very simple. If you're going to have that many uh, input output parameters and local tags, then you probably should be nesting your add-on instructions. The maximum data instance supported is 2 meg. That's actually quite a bit. Add-on instructions are edited offline only. You cannot edit an online instruction in the program while the program is running. Not even in the program mode. You have to save, go offline, make your edits, save, download. And I mentioned nesting. You can nest add-on instructions seven levels deep uh, just as you could with uh, subroutines, which means you can use an add-on instruction inside of an add-on instruction inside of an add-on instruction and so forth up to seven levels deep. You cannot use a JSR, jump to subroutine, to call an add-on instruction, add-on instruction. Now if we get some time we may talk about subroutines and passing parameters in and out of subroutines, which is the way we used to somewhat accomplish this same task. These add-on instructions are class inclusive. What that means is you can only use safety instructions inside of safety add-on instructions. Use of double integers, data types, or input-output parameters executes faster. Um, everything in the Logix engine works faster and better with double integers, 32-bit words. You can use uh, get system variable and set system variable with some limitations. Built-in instructions that are not available for use in add-on instructions, you can find these page 25 of this manual. Okay, here's a list of the unavailable instructions. As I look down through there, um, the only ones that I see that I might use normally would be JSR. Um, I don't use return anymore because it's not necessary to put a return at the end of a subroutine. So most of these immediate output, um, I've used that on occasion. So, but for the most part, I seldom use any of these instructions. This concludes this segment. Uh, we're trying to keep them between 12 and 20 minutes. We are also trying to pick natural stopping points in the outline. Uh, the next section will be on the geography of an add-on instruction. Thank you.